Like with so many aspects of Power Pivot and the self-service business intelligence in general, measures are probably the best introduced through a few examples. Unfortunately, it is impossible to do anything other than scratch the surface of measures in only a few lessons, because they are arguably the most important element in Power Pivot. So let's dive in. I already opened the file autosales.xlsx. From the Power Pivot tab, click on the Manage button. In Power Pivot, ensure that you are already in data view. Suppose you want to be able to display the number of cars sold in Power Pivot. Not only that, but you want a figure to adjust when it is filtered or sliced by another criterion, such as color or country. Put simply, you want this metric to be infinitely sensitive to how it is displayed, yet always give the right answer. Select the table to which you want to add a measure. I chose Sales here. Click inside the calculation area under the data. Add the following formula to the formula bar. Number of cars sold. Colon equal count rows. Open parentheses. You will see that the pop up will then suggest a list of DAX formulas interspread with a table's names in the current data model. Select the table sales and add the right parentheses. Confirm the formula's creation by pressing Enter or by clicking the check mark in the formula bar. The first thing that will strike you in comparison with creating a new column is that no column is made for this measure. You will see it in the Power View Fields pane or in a Pivot Tables field pane once you expand the sales table, where it appears just like any other column of data. The key thing to take away is that a correctly applied measure can be used in an Excel Power Pivot table or in chart or any type of visualization that always shows the correct result of any and all filters and slices that you've applied. Also, the figures are correct for each intersection of rows and columns and tables. All in all, it is well worth ensuring that you have all the measurements that you need for your analytical output and place in that they are working correctly in Power Pivot, because then they can rely on these calculations in the data set in so many different visualizations. Measures are DAX formulas, so in my learning to use measures, you will have become familiar with some more DAX functions. My intention here, though, is definitely not to take you through all that DAX can offer. Instead, I would like to show you a few basic formulas that can be helpful in real-world dashboards and give you some initial DAX recipes that should also be practical. So, as a second example, let's calculate the total cost of vehicles purchased. Although you can just type in a simple DAX formula, I prefer to show you how you can extend the knowledge you gained when creating calculated columns and applying many of the same techniques to creating measures. Click inside the calculation area under the data. Enter the name you want to use, total sales for this metric, followed by a colon and an equal sign. Enter sum as the function, followed by a left parenthesis. A list of all the tables and fields in the data model will appear, including any columns and measures that you have added. Enter a left bracket to restrict the pop-up list in fields in the current table. Start typing the field name, cost price in this example. After a couple of characters, any tables or fields with these characters will be listed. Scroll down and select Price Cost Field. Add a right parenthesis and press Enter. The measure is created and it appears in the field list. Let's change the format to a currency with a pound symbol. One important thing to note when creating measures is that you should use the table name and the field name if all these fields with the same name in several tables. This is so that DAX is certain that it is using the right field with the right table. What's more, if a table name contains spaces, the table will need to be in single quotes. In all cases, the field name has to be enclosed in square brackets. To practice a little and prepare for the ground for some eye-catching visualizations in the next few chapters, try creating the average, maximum, and minimum sales prices using the formulas in the following table. As you can well imagine, not all metrics are likely to be as simple as those you just saw. 
You can also create measures that are the result of combining several DAX functions. You should try adding the ratio of gross margin to sales prices to the data model for a little practice. In Power Pivot, ensure that you are in grid view. Select the sales table and click inside the calculation area under the data. Enter the name you want to use, ratio net margin sales for this metric. followed by a colon and an equal sign. Enter sum as the function, followed by a left parenthesis. Enter a left bracket to limit the list to fields in the current table. Select the gross margin field, enter a right parenthesis. Enter a forward slash, the divide by operator. Enter sum as the function, followed by a left parenthesis. Enter a left bracket to limit the fields in the current table. Select the sales price field, enter a right parenthesis. Press enter or click the check mark at the formula bar. In the ribbon, home tab, click the percentage button to apply a percentage format. Our measure is ready. Thanks for watching.